7 a.m. now on our Wednesday morning. Coming up here on Up with Krem, we have results from the Idaho special election. This morning, a couple of the races are too close to call. Plus, teachers in Washington continue to voice their opinions on social distancing in schools. This morning, the push to reduce physical distancing requirements around the state. And we're taking you outside. It's foggy in parts of the inland northwest. I'll let you know where the fog is and where the fog isn't. And Washington was voted the best state in the country by U.S. News again. And Idaho was not too far behind. This morning, we'll take a closer look at the reasoning behind the vote. Up with Krim begins now. Well, good morning. Welcome to Up with Krem. Great to have you with us here. This morning, there is a renewed effort to build a new sports stadium in downtown Spokane. So this morning, we want to hear from you at home. Do you want to see a new stadium? You can vote in our Twitter poll right now, or you can text us your thoughts at 509-448-2000. I also think it's interesting, Jen, coming up a little bit later in our show, we we're talking with a representative from the USL and he, he tells us about some of the really interesting data about Spokane's fanship and the Inland Northwest fanship that really contribute to why this decision happened in the first place in, in terms of talking about a professional soccer team maybe coming here. Oh, I like it. Yeah, I like it. You know, you got to have someone who supports it in order for it to thrive. Yeah. You know what he what I thought was so interesting was that if this stadium does get created, We'll have the Sounders uh, come here to Spokane to play. So more larger uh, soccer teams would be able to be in Spokane, which is a really cool opportunity that other sports don't see. Yeah, we'll be bringing that for you fully later on this morning here on Up With Krem on the CW22. But we also got to look outside as the sun is coming up on Jeremy in our weather center outdoors. What's it feeling like out there, buddy? Uh, it's uh, it's feeling a little tense out here right now. I just walked outside. You know, I'm, I'm walking outside. I'm, I'm doing the walk, right? I look up and right here, is a squirrel and a bird and they're just going at it. And I'm like, a Robin and a squirrel are fighting in the weather center. I was like, get out of here. I got to talk about weather. I got to let people know that there's fog in Coeur d'Alene. There's patchy fog in downtown, but you make your way to the top of South Hill and it's all sorts of sunny. It's that kind of morning. Right now we're looking at temps hovering right around 28 degrees, already starting to warm up 27 in Coeur d'Alene, 23 there in Sandpoint and 20s out in central Washington even if barely. Our storm down to the south now, that's the one that's been giving us some of those waves of energy, but as that moves out, it opens the door for this. You see up in Canada, some of those clouds, those are going to work their way in. Today, we've got the sun. You can see it right here. That sun is going to warm us up, give us some extra little energy, a little extra kick in the atmosphere, a little more conditional instability. And what that means is that later on this afternoon, we'll see some of those isolated showers grow pretty intense. That's some intense downpours, maybe some grapple, a little hail mixing in. So it is going to be a, a very interesting evening commute, depending on whether or not you hit one of those areas. By the time the sun goes down, we lose the energy. And then it kind of dries us out and gets us ready for a much drier, much, uh, much warmer weekend ahead. But for now, it's temps in the upper 40s today and some of those isolated showers developing later this afternoon. Jeremy, I'm going to write in some sunglasses for your budget. It is bright out there. I know, right? Uh, yeah, see if we can just throw them on. I'll, uh, I'll build a station. What do you think? Should I get some designer ones? Absolutely, as long as you grab me a pair. All right. <laughs> me too, please. Uh, I can do that. <laughs> it is 7.04 now. All right, this morning, crews are still tallying the votes from the Idaho special election. Yeah, this morning, we want to take a closer look at the current results we have right now of the school levies in your area, starting with Coeur d'Alene School District's supplemental levy. As you take a look at your screen, you can see right now a majority of the votes have voted to approve that levy. Now to the Post Falls School District's supplemental levy. Right now, the results too close to call. And as we look to the Kootenai Joint School District's Supplemental Maintenance and Operations Levy, as you can see right now, the yes votes are leading by a large margin this morning. And lastly, the Lakeland Supplemental Levy. Right now, those results also too close to call. For a full list of the results from every county, you can text the levy to 509-448-2000. 
This morning, there is a push to reduce six foot physical distance requirements in schools across Washington. Several district superintendents have sent a letter asking Governor Jay Inslee to consider the change. Nicole Hernandez joins us now to explain why school leaders want this request to be addressed soon. Hey, Nicole. Yeah, good morning, Joshua. So I actually have that letter right here with me. You can see how long it is spanning two full pages of writing. And then when you turn to the back page, you can see that there's actually signatures from different members of the Northeast Washington Educational Services District 101. So that ESD is behind me right now. That's this building behind me here, and it's the largest educational service district in the entire state of Washington. So they cover a bunch of different counties here in our area, including counties that like Adams, Ferry, Lincoln, Ponderay, Spokane, Stevens, and Whitman. In the letter, school leaders cite an American Academy of Pediatrics article. The article says six feet between students is not feasible without limiting the number of students. It found some countries have actually been able to successfully reopen classes with a three foot distance between students without seeing increases in community spread. Yesterday, Crum spoke with the superintendent of Northeast Washington Educational Service District 101. That's Michael Dunn. He says the letter is about safely getting education to students while keeping in mind their social and emotional well-being. So this really isn't about just willy-nilly. We want to get jam all kids into the school or all kids into a classroom. Spokane Public Schools is a member of this ESD, but Superintendent Adam Swinier did not sign the letter. We did reach out to Spokane Public School District for a statement, but we have not heard back at this point. And if you're interested in reading this full letter, the full letter is online at creme.com. You can check that out. Live in Spokane, I'm Nicole Hernandez. All right, Nicole, thank you. It is coming up now on 707. Time for your morning rush. More news in less time. There are about 1,000 COVID vaccine appointments available at Providence's Spokane Teaching Clinic for today and Friday. They will be administering the Pfizer shot at these appointments. Teachers, people 65 and older or people 50 and older who live in a multi-generational home are eligible to sign up. The vaccination process is by appointment only and second dose appointments will be scheduled on site. Now, if you'd like a link to make that appointment, just text the word vaccine to 509-448-2000. We'll get it right to your phone. Also looking across state lines in Idaho, the state house panel has approved legislation banning people under 21 from buying cigarettes or electronic smoking products. This will bring Idaho in line with the federal restrictions as supporters say stores in Idaho already follow this law. Opponents though say the law could actually limit specific laws that are in local governments. Well, this week, the National Guard is demobilizing from Second Harvest. Washington deployed the Guard last April, and they helped at the Second Harvest distribution centers in Spokane and Pasco. Now, those help uh, provide food to struggling families. Second Harvest, though, is still in need of volunteers. You can sign up on its website that you see there on your screen. Hey, get ready to enjoy some of the awesome spring-like weather we've all been celebrating because two more Spokane golf courses will be opening this week. Down River Golf is set to open up today and Esmeralda is set to open on Friday. For tee times, you can just visit SpokaneGolf.org to book online. And one more reminder for you, the Creek Qual Chan also opened up this past week. We are still waiting though to learn an opening date for Indian Canyon. It's a baby girl for the Puget Sound Orcas. Researchers just learned the sex of the newest addition to the J-Pod. The baby gave uh, photographers there a barrel roll, revealing the gender. They say she was born last September just north of Washington. And experts from the Center for Whale Research say any new female for the southern resident orcas are critical to the population's sustainability. And that's your morning rush. More news in less time. Let us know what's happening in your neighborhood by using the hashtag UpWithCrem on social media. 709 now, both men's and women's Gonzaga basketball teams are now champions of the WCC. Coming up after this break, we'll talk about their historic wins and how one of them was so close to not happening. Well, today Congress could pass President Biden's massive coronavirus relief package. And with that, there could be more money in your pocket. Everything to expect is coming up in our next half hour. And of course, we're going to take you outside, talk an active day of weather today and let you know what to expect as we all look forward to the weekend.